What yeah. is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Knights of Horror, another addition to Summer of Guests here on the Shoot the Ship podcast. I'm your host, Anthony, and with me today, uh, a member of the Madhouse Podcasting Network. He's got his own podcast out right now called LS3 Podcast, available anywhere you can stream uh, podcasts and listen to them uh, via Spotify, Apple Podcasts, you name it. It's probably up there. My good friend, who uh, I have the pleasure of watching scare every single year season, even though he tells me every year it's his last. Um, my dear friend, Lucio, how you doing? <laughs> I like how you said it's like every year. Every year. Every year, every year since I've met you, should I say. Well, you, every year you should treat it like your last. You know, it's like you, you, you always want to treat it like you, you Oh, it's always going to be the last one or it's going to be like the end of the world type thing. It's like you want to get if you if you're dying tomorrow, if you're going to die tomorrow, you don't know it. Then you're just going to you're just going to do it. You're just, just going to go for it. huh? just go out. And that by the it. end of this by November 1st, if you die right there and you just all of a sudden it happens, you just go like, you know what? I did my best. I scared the best. <laughs> worked hard. I had the. Just the endurance, the I did the sliding, the scares, and I, I got what I got by one, and I and you know I'm proud of it, proud of it. Man, uh, I don't think we've ever had you on shoot the shit before, huh? Uh, you did once, and I fucking ranted. <laughs> oh yeah, we were all in a dark place. When we <laughs> yeah, we never no, released I, that, but I, uh, I know it wasn't released. But I was, it, it was, I think during that time, I wasn't, it wasn't. To I think it was I think a few like I mean, almost a year I want to say year or two uh, since I've been on a pod because I think the last one was with Cinema Dudes with with yeah. us and that was really dark too but like that one I was like I was already like doing good and again my life together and then I was like and I think a lot in the world was going on and I was like oh you know what it's, this is something I need to like release that and then it was a bad timing <laughs> oh uh it yeah it, it, so it, it was one of those things where uh yeah. after i i watched this podcast i uh i sent it to sammy i'm like i need you to test watch this for me and just give me I your reactions and i was like i think a re i the wait and i wasn't even looking at the screen i was looking at somewhere downward or something and i looked up and i could see your face just like in this serious <laughs> mode you're like, <laughs> I was, I was just like, oh, I did something bad. I think that's when I realized I'm like, oh, I, I don't think it, I don't think it happened. I think when like three weeks later, and you were supposed to release it next week, and it was like three, three or four weeks later, I was like, yeah, I don't think it's gonna happen. <laughs> it, it wasn't anything personal. It was just it, yeah. it, it saved my ass and I no, to it's cover it, yours, it's, so. it's a, no, you did you did the right thing, man. I I I I really I did I did appreciate that. That's something to like. It's it's a it's a learning experience because you, you don't you don't really mean much when you get out of a podcast. I mean, you do, but like you, you don't you mean you like mean it, and then all of a sudden you go, you look at it and you go, oh shit, I said that. It's like and like ah, like it, you you work on those kind of mistakes, or you just go like. Um, when you're you're talking to someone and you interrupt them, you go ah shit! Like um, I interrupt them. Like just be in control, be in control. You know, like um, it's just one of those things you have to like learn about. That's why I've been learning throughout this whole six months, seven months of like doing podcasting. It's just like y you got to learn how to like be in control of the conversation. And it's well, I've um, noticed since the last time, like I I, I would say. Before we did a podcast for you, um, you you invited me over. We did one; uh, it was a good one. And then we did. I, I was kind of suckered into doing a second one um, because <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was with Rob at yeah. the time. Me and him were going to a, an indie show, and it you kind of suckered me in throughout the podcast. My my plans were I wasn't gonna say a word. You know, I was like, this is Rob's show. But then I was in the room, and then conversation started, and then I got included into it. So then I ended up getting in, like, halfway through. I finally was like, fuck it. I guess I'm in this show now. Yeah. Um, but, no, yeah. I, I've noticed that you you have really uh, – you've got you're, you've become a natural at this, man. Like, you, what? Oh, you're like on, a, yeah. on just podcasting. You just, you're just you just better than I am at this point. Uh, I, well, I, I don't, I don't want to say that because you've been you, – you know more as far as, like, I don't, I still don't know after like 
how many episodes i think this is the 21st i just i just filmed my 23rd if anything i think my 23rd i'm doing my 24th one coming this saturday and i'm it's like i still don't know what i'm doing I still don't know how to save a fucking uh, a but you, podcast you on a got, hard drive. You got it, something down because you, you got an audience that tunes in every week. You get yeah. guests that um, a lot of people either know, love, or, or are, are interesting, you know, and you have something locked down. I've, I, you know, I haven't, I, I'll be honest, I haven't listened to everything to the entirety, but the, the sections that I have listened to, you, you know, it's just stuff I've never even heard or, or, or from guests that I've people that I've met in real life, you know, yeah. that, you know, either through you or through other people. Um, and and it, it's one of those things where I'm, I'm listening and I'm like, shit, I never knew that about this person. I've known this person for about a year or two now, and I don't think it's ever come up in conversation. But hearing these stories, you know, it's it's something unique. You got your own format down. You got your own style down. And I'm just happy to have you part of the. Family. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to do something like. I wanted to do something different and just wanted to do something like so natural and um, everyone has a formula and I don't think I'm not to like, and I don't think it's a knock on them. Like they, they, they want to have their own way of doing it. You have like a horror theme podcast and you do these other ones and you, you have your own like style of it uh, behind the mask has their own like style of, you know, they bring these vets, these veterans from like the past and like decades and decades ago. And they, and they bring out their own uh, perspective on like haunt they how they were how they were um regulated around that time and then uh then you you know then, then there's me where like i do those things i bring those people in but like i like to have like i'm like let's just fucking just talk let's just talk instead let's have hey, I, just and, and that's something that i remember early on when we started hanging out uh, a, a little bit after we did your your first podcast with us, and then we started hanging out a little bit more. Yeah, that I, I remember you throwing me the concept of of you wanting to do this project and and, and everything, and and you just wanting to just sit down with some of your friends or, or people that are, are known in the in the community and just and have a civil normal talk with them. I mean, yeah, with exactly. us, you know, when we did our show. You know, there was we talked about a wide variety of things, you know, and I don't get to be a guest on podcasts very often. I think I've only done a few here and there. But, you know, it, it's one of those things that I I don't. um, I forgot completely where I was going with that. You like you don't like um, I guess you should say is, is that I wish I um, put this Um I guess you just have like this way of like doing that. You don't go to much podcast. You're more of a podcaster than more the more of like being a podcast guest. And then, although you, you know, uh, it does hurt me because I do want to be more on the guest side for once. You know, just to kind of uh, be the it, one interviewed instead of interviewing. I mean, I have fun doing yeah. it. Don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. you know, it's just it's. Yeah. I want to. I want to be on the other side for once yeah. and i don't have to really worry about anything other than telling us see story. this is where the mistake happens because like i don't know what what you were just saying back in those <laughs> few minutes just a few seconds ago I, it, well no so, it's, it's, it, you, but you brought it back to point is, is is that uh you know i've i've only been on so many and 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 it's because the fact of the matter is you know i i've done so many i've been doing this podcast since since you know 2018 uh the interviews started in 2019 uh, yeah. summer of 2019 and and we you know it wasn't something that we knew was going to work initially it was something that we kind of were were interested in doing because we've watched a lot of haunt videos and, and i remember telling sammy like when we first were going to do our first uh character interview that i was just like man i just i kind of want to dive deep into the behind the scenes of haunt i don't think a lot of people yeah. get to see that very often from different perspectives and, and everyone has a different perspective going into it and i've learned that and i've heard so many interesting stories i've heard you know a lot of things with a lot of people you being included in that list but it's one thing that when we launched that in 2019 after haunt season, it immediately picked up. And I think it sparked, it sparked a light for a, a lot of people that, that this, this is interesting and this is, yeah. this is cool. And I'm now I'm seeing, and I'm not going to say I'm, I'm the one responsible for it, but you know, it, it's, it's cool to see it, but you know, but you it, are part of that. You made a, a, a community for yourself 
and you made a you made this community of like this horror theme for horror fans that are like this Halloween huge enthusiast fans. Yeah, I should say, and I, um, and I'm saying that just out of respect because like I, I understand, I I see that, and I look, I'm like, that's that's there's another community out there, and that there's you look at the haunt community too. You go to these like it's not just not scary farm. I just thought not scary farm was just the thing, and not scary farm versus Universal. That was it, and yeah. I didn't know that there was like out of like my nine years over there, like experiencing, yeah, haunt that there was other events. I didn't know that the like the now like you look you look at now like every it's been evolved so differently. You look at now that there is the the home haunts are now are huge. Like we talked about that before the home haunts are like this huge community. Now that you go yeah. to Corona, you go to like, you, you go to Santa, you go to like these other well, cities. You know, it's funny you brought up the home haunt scene because I think that's something that I, I think that it, it was, there was some traction to it uh, prior to the pandemic. You know, you had people like, you know, you, you had Rick West, you had, you know, all these, you know, you know, promoters and people who organize these big events like Midsummer Scream and all these conventions and stuff actually reach out to these people and bring some of their 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 haunt displays to the events so, so they can showcase them. And, and 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 I think that was the first initial push for the independent home haunt scene where, you know, you have all these amazing, talented people but they're not getting recognized as enough as they should be. And yeah, because I mean, totally they were that so recognized. You see them as that um, in those events. Like you go to Midsummer, yeah, and you see like the Boneyard uh, FX uh, event, and you see like these other mazes are like look like these home haunts, but they're you know they're placed in the event for right. that reason. Yeah, they're like they're because I guess you could consider them as booths, right? Right? Uh, are they? Yeah, it's, almost because like. You know, they, they, if you go to a, an event like Midsummer Scream, anyone out there who's never been, uh, Midsummer Scream is essentially the Comic Con of, of horror conventions and haunt conventions. Uh, it's the huge, it's yeah. the, I, what, what I, what can we say now? It's like the biggest now. I would say easily it's become one of the biggest conventions for horror and haunt out there because. It, I, and, I, and, yeah, I agree. You know, it, it's one of those things where, you know, the only reason I say that is because when you look at, you know, San Diego Comic Con, for, exact, for example, it's one of the biggest comic book conventions in, in the world. Um, people come from all over, you know, different states, different countries, you know, overseas and stuff. So um, for, for people to show up and, and show their support for a love for something, it, it's, it's one thing. But when you add, you know, like, and this is where the comparison for Comic Con comes in, is when you add you know, these panels that are, are kind of similar to what you would see at Comic-Con. Instead of, you know, big-time movie studios and big-time, you know, companies like that, you got the big-time companies of the horror and haunt industry, which is, you know, Not Scary Farm usually shows up. Halloween Horror Nights has a panel. 13th Floor Productions has yeah. a panel. You know, all these haunts show up, and, and, it's, and it's the one time a year you can actually have them in the same building, uh, under the same roof, uh, showcasing what they're bringing to haunt season, and, and it really gives the 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 haunt community um, a lot of different options to check out for the haunt season as to what they think if they want to try something new if they've never even heard of things, and that's where the Hall of Shadows comes in because that Hall, Hall of, of Shadows, Shadows. So the Hall of Shadows at Midsummer Scream is essentially where all the home haunts come to display. That's uh -huh. that's basically a big giant room where the lights are off, you know, it, it has the haunt vibes and everything, and every home haunt has a certain square footage that they can build and showcase or preview or even bring back uh, old uh, haunts that they've made in the past or are working on for the future. Um, it's basically a little, a little preview as to what you can expect from a lot of these home haunters and independent haunts this coming season. And when you look at an event and a place like the Hall of Shadows, you know, you're thinking, okay, this is an idea for you know that 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 was that was brought to the team's attention that they need more love and support and showcased at events like this and we want to give people that halloween and horror haunt vibe you know it's it's it is midsummer you know and and mm -hmm. and we're yeah. almost to haunt season we're about a month and a half away and we want to give someone we want to give the audience something to kind of get themselves pumped for and that's where the Hall of Shadows steps in. So it, it's one of those things where Midsummer Scream is literally, it, it has something for everybody. There's, there's amazing vendors that sell 
a wide variety of items between yeah. homemade to, uh, you know, stuff like, you know, Trick or Treat Studios comes out, sells masks and, and props mm-hmm. and everything. There's prop makers, you know. Adam, Adam Just FX comes yeah. out. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. They, I think they're they're taking a booth, too. And then, you know, and they, they have these other, like, other um, different factors of, like, uh, different elements of, like, uh, of haunt, too, is, like, you know, from, like, sliding, there's, like, the cave, like, Slider Dynamic comes in, you know, Scott's company. Yeah. There's other things are involved and they then then they do these these um I think they do like scare school too, I like, fit. Yeah, they got they got, got they got a couple things there. And you know, you got Decay yeah. Brigade there, you know, they're there doing their slider show and uh-huh. and you know, you got, you know, the the people who come and cosplay and, and all the celebrities and you know, like I said, it's basically a Comic Con for the horror haunt community. This is you know, this is what our convention is. This is what we find fun year round. And I'm part of both communities. I'm I'm a geek at heart with comic books and yeah. And, and I love horror because obviously I dedicated a, ho- a whole channel to it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's one of those things I think when, when I came realizing as to when I was going to make this channel, I was like, well, what am I going to talk about? I've, I've done many YouTube channels in the past and they just weren't going anywhere. They were just kind of for the hell of it. And I finally wanted to take this journey serious and I wanted to get an audience that could um, – enjoy the content and, and, and we can interact with the audience and, 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 you know, have a good time with everyone and, and whatnot. And, and Knights yeah. of Horror, when that dropped, uh, and the only reason I'm bringing this up because Knights of Horror uh, this year, this August will be turning five. Um, it's been five years oh, since true. we started yeah. the channel. Uh, wow. and, and when we initially started the channel, it was always, always supposed to be about Horror Nights. And it, it's, I think it's grown so much from there. And, and a lot of it's because, you know, I decided to reach out like pe- to people like you, you know, and 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 to to hear yeah. your stories and, and to hear your experiences and and you you don't you did a thing where like a lot of these haunt these other haunt channels, I don't see a lot of them do. I maybe I mean uh, uh, you. It seems like you only in some ways have represent that you are the only one that seems to reach out these haunt actors. And speak to them and tell them like, "Hey, I want to sit down and like actually have like a interview with you. I want to actually get to know like what you do. Why, why is this character that you do is what? what do you, how is it developing? Yeah. Why is this? Why is there? Um, you know, why do you work in this event? You know, what made you? And then you you just go on and on and um, just turns to this conversation and just in in but like I. It seem I it'd be honest, maybe it's just I think this is a personally for me, and I'm not just being biased because I'm your friend. I'm saying that this is like I've only seen this from you that you're the only one that's done this kind of work. Um, and I think that kind of should be encouraged for others that are doing these haunt channels, like these Halloween channels or are involved with the haunt community that do these channels too, these podcasts and should be motivated to like do the same thing, your work as you're doing. You well, kind of are representing that. In yeah. Some and, and I appreciate that, man. That means a lot. Um, yeah. I do, I do love interviewing people. It's, it's something that, um, believe it or not in high school, I was never a public speaker. I wasn't like the first to go up and, and do something Oh that boy, quick. I was I was in special ed for like since sixth grade. I just like I, that's how they re- re- represent me as like so yeah. like in high school I was yeah. in so when I graduated in high school I was in a higher a, a second level higher than special ed. So there was RSVP or something like that, right? Or AVP or something like that. I don't know the name. It was just the second higher. They seem like, hey, man, you're just about smart, okay? Not smarter, but, like, just smart. We can just put you in that I mean, it, it, even if someone said that about yeah. me, I, I think I would take that as a compliment because that, that sounds yeah. about right. I'm just about yeah. smart, not not, yeah. not too smart, not, not smart, <laughs> but, you know. It is neither here nor there. But no, you know what? It's funny you brought that up because I, I remember when uh, talking about – you know, podcasts and whatnot. Obviously, we yeah. talked about you know you telling me uh, things when when you were wanting to do one and, and whatnot, and and how much it's finally come. I think it was that's about a year in the making for you, right there. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, I was gonna just actually talk, tell you about that. Like when you talk about like what you want to do and your your development towards 
your podcast to this day. And like for me, like I wanted to. I've been wanting to do something like that. Like that was something that I was already inspired by. I watched podcasting. I watched podcasts by like a handful of them are all comedians. And then there's some of them are doctors. Some of them are just actors. Some of them are just like, you know, they're, they're uh, podcasters in general. Um, and some of them are movie reviewers. And I, I was just listening to them to get like this, like, I just was a fan of it. And then all of a sudden, like, I told myself, like, oh, yeah, I can, I could do something like this. Because, like, it was challenging because, like I told you, I was in, I had a speech impediment since the fifth or sixth grade. And I was in special ed all the way down to my 12th grade. And I just wasn't. Like I felt like I wasn't smart enough. I felt you like know I that you know what? we've been friends for a few years now, and that's the first yeah. time I'm ever heard, hearing about this too. So yeah, it, it was something that I never was very com- very comfortable of like expressing, and I was okay with it now. I mean, I've been okay with it for years, obviously. But like, it, it's um, I've said it in my podcast before too about like how like I was in those classes and I was like you know struggling with my words and forming my sentences right and um and I just I just talked about this with Vi the one I just released with Vi uh episode 20 if you ever want to check it out it's he I told him about like this whole conversation where we're just having bring up topics and I told him like you know like I was so afraid to bring like to talk and like I would or I, I wanted to form I wanted to talk about a sentence sorry I wanted to I, whenever I wanted to like, try to listen and like kind of communicate with someone I was always so dazed off I was so spaced out and when I wanted to talk to them I would be like oh like I'm trying to catch up and then when you catch up to them and when you're trying to make up these words and all of a sudden it just kind of doesn't make sense it gets thrown out of the window and now they get tell you they tell you like well like well well why you're not making sense dude you're you sound like you sound drunk or you just sound stupid you know like it's one of those things like i'm i i i was i was so uh that was my weakness that was a flaw of mine and then i i i got and then i started to get better i think pot like podcasting listening to other podcasts helped out a lot and also reading and and like develop like just developing on yourself i think that's a lot that's a huge uh like huge take of what you should do is like working on yourself to evolve to, to be a better person so like, Dude, i it, uh it, it it's, helps. it's one of those things where i and i was talking to you about it a little bit earlier was you know i've 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 noticed since you started and, and even doing this podcast when we started it like you kind of just you're ready to go you know you know exactly you know you know how to do this and everything like you say you're still learning but you you become a natural at just talking now and and that's that comes with the territories you got to keep a conversation going to keep the audience interested and uh you know what's funny is going back a little bit to you know talking about other podcasts and stuff you know one of the best compliments and you gave me a really good compliment earlier and i love you Mm. for that I love you. Period. I appreciate. But. It. No, I love you too. I appreciate that. <laughs> but no, it, it was one of those one of the conversations I had with uh, Scott Dieterman and Jeremy early on when they were discussing starting a, a show. Um, I remember Scott was telling me he wanted to do one to to get a, a more in depth look from behind the scenes of a lot of the old school, and you're seeing a lot of the new and, and newer generation of haunt mm-hmm. uh, of haunt characters and, and actresses uh, come in and, and tell their stories, and it, and it's a cool balance between both generations because it's one of those things where you get to see how how it was back in the day and now you get to see what it's like today and it, it, i think it was a brilliant yeah. idea for a podcast I, I remember one person actually hitting me up saying that they're copying me and whatnot but i was i was 100 percent on board when they told me the idea before they even announced it and for that yeah. person to to say that i was like they're not copying me dude they're taking what i do and and if anything making it better like yeah, I, the, you can't you can't copy natural conversation or natural. No, like, not at all. You can't copy and, you can't copy storytelling at yeah, all either, dude. Because and, and uh, because you, you can make you can do a storytelling uh back like podcast, but you can make it style of your own way. Yeah, you can take it's like saying it's like taking a logo 
a logo, if I were to take a Target logo, and I, if I were to take off that little Target, that little circle that on the O, on the that little that little sign, that's pretty much taking off ten percent of the logo. That's a le- that's legally legally I can do that. I could do yeah, that. Yeah, because at just that make point, him- it's it's you know it's what's considered a parody. However, you know yeah. with with behind yeah. the mask, I don't consider. That. I don't know if that's the same analogy. No, yeah, this, well, but like, I mean, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Like, it, yeah. it, behind the mask is not a parody at all. No, behind no, the mask not at all. Is its own established um, uh-huh. show where where they you know sit down and, and have conversations with it. And I and I love those guys so much that they're, every time they're I, great people. Well, they they're are 100. Yeah. Yeah, and every time people. I watch an episode, I'm like, damn, man, they got. They really did a good job on this episode. Like I can't wait. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm eager to to wait every week to to listen to you guys and 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 behind the mask. I, I, like, I am too. I I just I just subscribe to them. I tell them like you know like I'm I'm look forward to every week. What do you guys have? Like it, it's it's that's that's the that's the little the 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 dice of it. It's like um you don't know what. If they're gonna bring like an old veteran from like the old decades ago, yeah. or they're bringing someone that's new, which is like Cherry, like La Loopsy, uh, that's like totally in the new community. Hey, and we gotta, can we start- talk about that real quick? I mean, because that what? was the funniest and cutest intro I've ever seen. Oh yeah, that was podcast, a really probably. good one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever, and that was the first yeah. for I think any anyone to ever do a podcast <laughs> as far as our community goes, because like I don't think I've ever seen but uh, you know no 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 talking shit on her i love her she's she's no I she's a, she's i just i recently started talent. calling her hollywood because she she yeah. has been doing a lot of uh little you know extra work and she's working yeah. her way up to become an actress and i guarantee you one day I, we'll see her on the academy i Award don't i don't know her i don't know her very well but she seems like a just Dude, a i mean i, I can promise you this when we when we relaunch cinema dudes later down the line watch we're gonna talk about her one day and then her breakout role and and it's gonna watch. I bet you, I, I can I can predict it already. But moral of the story is, I thought that was the yeah. funniest intro to you know she 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 joined in another group's uh, episode on accident because she just had the days mixed up because she's you know she's she's a workhorse she's constantly working you know right. she's doing she's got you know you know other things going on in her personal life and and you know she hits the gym every day and she she keeps on this routine. And, and and just to see that she mixed up the days and, and they kept that in the intro. I mean, I, I think that was some of the funniest things ever. And I, and I really enjoyed uh, enjoyed was, seeing that. And, and I, I haven't yeah, gotten yeah. around to listening to your episode yet. But, um, you know, for me, it, it's one of those things where it's like, I know everything about this guy, but I'm still I'm still going to listen to it because there's probably something yeah. that he said in there that I don't know. There's there's some things I think I might have not. I might have missed, like, left out from you, like, that you discussed that was in there. That, like, a lot of it was from the beginning, beginning towards all the way towards, like, like, y- you want to know how, like, I'm friends with, like, Aaron Vi. You like, want to know how, how I-, I got these scars? <laughs> I mean, you don't know, like, how I got friends with them. It's, and I, I built this like detail of a character i think i got in depth with that too it's like i got so in depth of like how i found like my scare tactic and how i i kept it stable and how like i i got involved with other things like it just was like there's there's so much detail with it and that's and there was a long long conversation about thinking of you know in the in the realm of the multiverse you know, because that's been really popping lately, uh, mm-hmm. whether it's Marvel or other indie projects that Jamie Lee Curtis is involved in, mm-hmm. um, whether it be that, you know, it, it's it, it, in the realm of the multiverse. I would love one day. And this is just me geeking out. And anyone who knows me, Scott, I'm talking to you because you see it the most. Um, anyone who knows me knows that I geek out and fanboy a lot. And I think a geek out moment would I would love to see uh uh, a variant, should I say, because that's multiverse talk right there. A variant of hostile, but in the Goring Twenties. <laughs> what do you? I mean, you think you could pull it off? You know, you think you can give hostile a Twenties look? Uh, uh, I can get, I can do it. I don't know how it work. I, I can, um, I can try something like that. Um, well, I'm not saying doing it for auditions. I'm just saying, like, yeah, you think you I think can, if, tr- you think I can you try, could, like. I can bring. I think that the mo. I think the most, at like comfortable thing. I think the most uh, comfortable, the most 
I guess, plausible thing to work on is to bring it somewhere to, like, Boardwalk. Um, so one That'd be brought interesting. Up a, someone brought up be, an idea. Would, would of, it be hostile, like, as a clown? or It would be hostile as a clown, and someone told me, like, to actually wear the long sleeve uh, over the over sleeve. Um, oh, so you sh- the, hand, the hands are covered hands are and everything. covered and, like, have it fully white clown makeup and then just like um that's something involved with that's something i can do um i i don't i don't know if it'll work but um i already have a character in mind that i wanted to do anyways okay let's Um, just leave it at that for no before (laughs) i do that before i do that i have to pause you because i have to grab a door i have to grab the door real quick hold on grab the door hold on one second while he's away, I like to take this moment to uh, thank Lucio for coming on the show. Uh, it's it's an honor and a pleasure to be talking with him again. Uh, and stay tuned after the show. We have an exclusive um, performance from none other than our good friends, Mortalis, who we had on the podcast uh, about a month ago. And we got a performance um, off their debut album. And I am super excited. They recorded this for us. I was supposed to put this in the Mindless Horror Podcast episode um, a couple about a month ago, but I am putting it in this episode because it's a special episode with Lucio, and I think uh, the vibe of Mortalis at the end will 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 complete it all. So stay tuned after the show. Special performance from Mortalis. Uh, now back with our guest Lucio. Sorry, I have to. <laughs> Open the door. It's okay. Give me a, give me an opportunity <laughs> to plug the ending because I, I, we did start something new. I don't know if you watched uh, Oingo shoot the shit. It just, it just dropped today. Um, and with Oingo, I tried. I tried. Not only did I try a new style of filming the podcast, but a new um, a new thing I want to do for summer of guests. If if I can get enough bands to to submit stuff, but uh, basically we're gonna try to get live performances or, or performances from original bands. Um, Today on on Oingo's episode, we had uh, we went to see Reminisce at yeah. Chain Reaction. And man, I am so fortunate. I, I freaking man, I wanted to watch him. I I, I never got I just never got to see him. I he told me about it. Uh, Thrash invited me. I think he invited me when I had him on, but he was telling me like, oh yeah, you should go. And it's at the Chain Reaction. Chain. I'm like five minutes away from the Chain Reaction. So I'm like. I'm like, dude, I can go, and then um, I think I, I got off late, and I was just a long day at work. No, uh, it was it was uh, we went because uh, I had told Thrash like two shows ago that he did prior before this one that um, I would love to come in and help him, him get footage of his band so he can oh, have okay. it for uh, Instagram promotional or you know put it on YouTube. I I, I think he was saying that. One of his longtime fans that, you know, his fans of the band and stuff uh, didn't get to make the show and was asking if they're going to record it. And unfortunately enough, we were there to uh, get to do oh, that. Oh, that's um, cool. So okay. I don't know when he's going awesome. to release uh, the entire show uh, per se, but um, you can expect in the next couple of weeks here on Nights of Horror. Um, okay. Except for this episode. This episode, we, we're going to do more Talos because uh, mm. I love those guys and they're a good yeah. thrash metal yeah. band coming up. But in the next couple weeks on Shoot the Shit, you'll see some live performances from Memorist, kind of uh, in a way showcasing the band and, and giving them more uh, attention and more eyes drawn to them. So, awesome. uh, And if well, any other band so- out there wants to, uh, if you know, if you want to get your music heard, um, we're, we're offering you the platform to do it. Uh, just film yourself for, you know, give me a recording of, of you and the band playing with some good audio, maybe some decent, I know audio for that kind of stuff is a little bit harder to record, but you yeah, know, I, I will take what I can get. I'm not a picky that's person. Some good, that's a good concept to do. I think that, yeah, I mean, for you, especially for that's into like the music industry too, it's like, it's a good format. Well, it's you see, room. it's like, I, it, it, it comes because... What I would love to do future-wise with all my podcasts, um, Mindless War and Shoot the Shit mainly, is uh, because I'm thinking Shoot, Shoot, Shoot the Shit will be a, a seasonal podcast, so it will only really come out during the summer. Um, I know we recorded an episode a few months back with, uh, with Looney, um, but I want to make Shoot the Shit a seasonal show where it's only summer, so that way summer of guests can come around and we have all of our friends or 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 good you know some good lineup of guests come on and stuff but i want to make it kind of like in the style of a late night talk show where you know eventually i would love to have 
a bigger space um, and have a whole setup, a desk setup, and and and, and Mike's cameras, uh, you know, a couch for people to come sit on or chairs. And, and just come on like a late night talk show and just kind of film it that way. And, yeah. you know, with a late night talk show, usually you see uh, musical performances at the end of the show. Um, and I thought this, you know, there's a lot of local bands out there that are still trying to get their name out. And I thought this would be a great platform, a great way to help them. Um, I oh, haven't gotten cool. any requests. I, I, like I said, I just have reminiscent footage and, and a song from Mortalis. You are fortunate enough to get the song from Mortalis tonight. Hmm. So okay. that should be fun. Uh, oh, cool. But yeah, from La Puente, California, Mortalis oh, will be nice. on the show later on tonight. So wow. So okay. stay tuned. Serious. But uh, no, yes. it's been. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's return good. to 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 uh, talk about your point. To like go back to your point. Uh, what were we were talking about? Um, about the character, um, Mike. Yes. My also character from different variants. Yeah. Um. So, it's a. I, I get it. I don't know how I would. I would bring something like that towards scoring 20s maybe like uh like a prisoner from like the green mile in some ways i guess <laughs> you know like i don't know how to like describe it but like like I, I i guess you can bring something like that i don't know about like the whole blindfold concept and everything else and i i always um, pictured hostile in, in goring 20s as kind of like Oh man, what's the word I'm looking for? He just had maybe a one bad day, like kind of like something like the Joker, you know, where it's one bad day that kind of drove him insane, and uh, it's a different. Now in the world of the multiverse, when you talk about different variants, that means they're not, you know, if there's a ghost town version of Hostel and there's a Goring Twenties version of Hostel, it's not going to come from the same background of things. You're just going to have to change the character to adapt to the to the timeline or the uh, the universe as it is. And the way I look at Ghost Town Hostel is, you know criminally insane kind of just mm. going over there and well, you, you yell at people yeah. and and that's well i blame others it's, for it's terrifying. their problems yeah. i well, i my my character blames i should say uh stand correctly not myself but like my character likes to blame people for about my problems so it's like is your character per se uh because you know how in ghost town a lot of these characters are like animals or is your character mm -hmm. human still? Like, it's did it, human. Did, did it your character human. ever? It's um. It is. He, tra he didn't it, transform it's, it's, because of the curse, right? He just kind of went insane over the years. Yeah, he went insane over the years. And he started to just to decay himself. He looks really decayed and scarred up, and just looks pale. And he looks like it. It, it looks like just a criminally insane person. You know, like how any criminally insane person just doesn't uh, develop themselves. They don't take care of themselves obviously because like they're they're in this like psychotic state um so they have like the scars around them and they have like the like i said the pale face and the blood and um they they'll do anything to like eat something and they'll do uh they'll they'll do anything chaotic to like to hurt, hurt themselves or and then they'll or they'll hurt others because like they think that's a lot better they feel like they get a the serotonin out of it because it's um because when they hurt others they feel they feel this like better reaction out of it it's like i not every patient will do that but like there's patients out there that feel in some ways to do that and that's just what my patient does it's that like because you know he doesn't know who killed his whole family and everything and he he you know he doesn't know but like he well the whole story if you read it along the along the way it will make sense of like oh well this person did it but he's blaming others he's blaming the whole town because like you feel like he blame will he will blame the whole town yeah because like he he killed because he his whole family that's why he goes out there and he's just fucking chaotic <laughs> I've, i mean i i know i i fed him a, a funnel cake at one point yeah so yeah, well that's the thing he'll eat anything <laughs> would you say like now, this is something that I have always found interesting, and you hear this a lot more with, with bands, per se, but I, I've heard interviews of, of, of bands and, and artists that, like, when they go on stage, they, they kind of become a different person. It's almost like a split personality. Like, they let the, the musical artist inside of them come out, and that's when they really, that's when that, that's who's uh -huh. playing that show, and then the person behind that is, is different. Would you say when you go out, is it kind of like that? Is it like, 
Lucille's gone and Hostel is here, and then when you go backstage and kind of even it, I and I've heard stories of you taking some time to have to wind down backstage, yeah. but is it one of those things where it, it, it kind of one uh, part of you leaves and another part of you steps in? Uh, I want to say, uh, 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 sadly, yes. <laughs> oh, I mean, not sadly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, no. It's, I mean, it's just like in a way, it's it's kind of it sounds crazy enough because I'm I'm working for chump change <laughs> but like but like it's for fun though it's it's you make it fun if it's fun if you make it fun but at the same time uh to go back what you what you're saying is that um yeah i i try to not bring a hundred percent of myself out there well um and i tried to be this whole different person i tried to be a different kind of um uh human and it's well, my main focus just being this absorbed around this character that I want to do. Yeah, because uh, it, it's that's the whole goal, right? It's just like you want to be when you're out there as a werewolf, you want to be there as a werewolf. You don't want to be there. It's just like, like you know, Billy. You know, like what what the fuck? Like who who wants to be Billy? I'll be you know? I'll be Billy. Have you seen Stranger no, no, Things? Billy's I'm a seeing, badass. <laughs> B- Billy, I have a fucking thing about that. By the way, I just talked about Stranger Things uh, as well. So like, well, I've, I've seen it all. So if you, I mean, well, I'll put a spoiler I, 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 warning. But I mean, I've seen it all, so we could talk. Yeah, about Yeah, we'll talk about it in a little bit. But like, um, yeah, like it's it's kind of like that. It's like you 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 want to be when you get onto that field which is the streets um you want to change you want to swap to and become myth like have this method act of like being someone else of this other character that's the whole point i mean that's the fun of it it's like to be weird to be like incredibly weird about it and be this whole different person like i can act like a diff i can act like a crazy person and come back and i can come back at the end of the day i can come back and be my you know my normal self i i kind of yeah. want to do something fun with you before we we venture on into uh because I'm, I'm assuming after this we're going to talk about television and movies because mm-hmm. that's another thing you and i are very passionate about mm-hmm. but there's something i want to do it's something that's fun it just came in my head right now and I, i'd like to get your reactions on it nothing against uh other characters i i just uh, it's just me fanboying and Hopefully one day we can get a video game or we can make live action projects where it's it's almost like a haunt Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Um, I, I would like to see what your opinions would be if I put you up against some people in Ghost Town. Um, now, it's a fight? yeah, like if you guys were to like, okay, say okay. Now I know obviously um, haunt is a, is a is a form of theatrics which I love. I'm a huge theater guy. I'm a huge uh, I'm a huge nerd for that and I just love watching live performances especially at Haunt and it's some of the most entertaining performances that that is. With that comes character development and you have character backstories. Some characters have abilities, some characters don't. Um, so I'd like to take the amazing Hostel uh, and I'd, I I want to put them up against a few characters, and, and what do you think what would happen at that? Let's we'll start off with uh, the the man who pretty much controls you, but if you were to turn loose on him, who would win in a fight? You or death? Uh, because he, he has to in a fist fight. Are you talking about? Does he have ability powers? And everything? I mean, you really don't have abilities, huh? I don't do have abilities. I mean, I have, so I have, I can beat the shit out of some people. You know? <laughs> you're gonna, can, so you're I, gonna, you're telling me, yeah, you're gonna, I can beat if I have, if I have the ability to like, I have the ability to beat someone with my head too. That's my ability. I mean, I can beat things. Like I can, I can just like, I, I'm aggressive. I'm, I'm like a fucking gorilla. Like I could beat the shit out of people. So you're like, gonna, you're gonna kill death. I can, I can, I can really brutally beat death, but at the same time. Death has this ability to like swap differently, uh, you know, uh, transition to different places, and he's he's like that. He has this like spirit mobile, like the spirit um, power, and yeah. um, I think death wins out overall. I think he does, and he's he's very um, he he wins at that, and he he has that. Uh, he's he's not um, he's not mortal he's he you know like I, i'm well, he's death. like i he's death and i i have this like 
the ability to be like, oh shit, well, okay, I'm fucked. Like I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm kind of fucked with that. It's kind of hard because like, but like he, he, he does have this. It, you look at death and you just see just this normal person in a black cloak. But like at the same time, like he does have some powers. He does act. He, the thing is, is that he can. He he has the ability to act like a different per- a different person he can act like he can act like a werewolf and he can beat me he can he can he can just brutally beat the shit out of me but like Damn i begs he called you a bitch bro yeah <laughs> <laughs> no like it's it's yeah he, he can he he, he can <laughs> act like a different but like that's the thing like he 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 has that that death of his character that can do something well different. okay uh this this i don't know how uh, we'll see uh, i'm curious to hear some feedback from him probably I'll, I'll probably get a message if he watches this video or he'll message he will, you he will get, he will no i'm not talking like, about bags i know bags will well i don't know if bags will watch this video but if he does i'll bring it up when i if we ever do bring a, a good perspective He's yeah good perspective i got I, i'll probably do the same game with him this is, might be something new i might try <laughs> i might i don't know who sees uh you're the first i'm trying it with so you're you're the uh, you're the frankenstein's monster that i'm experimenting oh on. shit well there you go <laughs> hey i'm i'm really gonna try it hey okay so what about uh ooh hostile versus the possum Aaron Frayne. I'll beat the fuck out of him anytime, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'll beat the fuck out of that oh, furry monster dog. I'm gonna, that just, guy, that thing, I'm gonna edit I, this clip I, out I, just like I sent it to him. I could I could beat the fucking living shit out of that dude. You know how much fucking that tail I can grab, that skull tail, and I could just <laughs> grab him and swap him back and forth. He's so goddamn light. That guy is a fucking stick, dude. He's a, he's a goddamn stick. Like I, I and I, I love like obviously I'm fucking friends with him. I love him to death, but like he like i can but like as as the way he's the the his his uh strength is no he's not he's he can't do much i can i can drag he that said, hair on the floor said, and just, no he's not yeah. he's not gonna mm-hmm. win he uh, can agree he can he can probably agree with me too he'd be like oh yeah man he yeah <laughs> he could he could beat the shit out of me <laughs> all right all right i'll do you know okay this is gonna yeah. be a fun one this is also uh you're gonna you could send that going... to him you could tell him that i love him. <laughs> yeah, you're love gonna be going friends. up a female on this next one uh mm. icon cool. of not scary farm but um i gotta i i would i'm curious to see who would win this fight i don't know much about her abilities i just know she's a very creepy character walking around the streets of ghost town um Hostile versus the bride. Oh, that bitch will flow away. <laughs> <laughs> that bitch will flow away. Why you gotta be mean like that? I like the bride. No, I love the bride. I know the bride. I know her very well. I know her personally. I just was like, I think the bride is just the type of person to like. She's that has the ability to like, you know, uh, what is that word? I'm tra- transition to levitate. Uh, levitate. Teleport. Levitate. Le- le- yeah teleport thank you teleport just like bags is teleport to different places and she's just like that she's a ghost pretty much right she's a ghost in it, some it, ways. I, I i've always kind of you know i always thought that uh and i don't know if i, I know she uh she i don't know if she got inspiration from this this is a well-known attraction uh when you think of the bride someone like the bride like that you think of two things first thing obviously uh, in a more current version, um, the haunted mansion is yes. one of them, and it seems like a, a kind of almost the same concept. But she probably put her own twist on it, which I I absolutely well, love. Well, the bride is the bride is the oldest character in evolve. All well, I, and I know, and I know she wasn't the first one to play it. Yeah, oh yeah, there was, yeah, there was another yeah. one that played it a lot differently than how she played it. But I'm I get what you're she, getting at. If, yeah, mm-hmm. she took some inspiration off of, uh, you know, the, you know, the bride at, at, at the haunted match. Another one that you think when you well, think of the, go the person that worked there. Sorry to interrupt. Like that person that worked there, that work that plays that character. She used to work at haunted mansion for a while. Oh really? She was a cast member. She worked at haunted mansion. She was one of the 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 maids i guess then that oh, okay. during that era yeah um she was um so she worked there for a while so i guess she can yeah i guess you can say that she got that from there but yeah Maybe. Sorry, go I, mean, ahead. I don't know i don't know what the inspiration was behind the bride um all i know is it's a very fucking scary looking character very cool character and i will both- say though i will say that because she does win in this one because she uh has the advantage of like she she her character is supposed to scare me too 
in some ways is supposed to freak me out because like she starts she'll start screaming at me and i get freaked out because i'm like this is not normal this is like i'm supposed to do that in some ways and then she just like starts like screaming at me and just chases me and all, all around and i think that she has the advantage of that so that that will that will give me the, some oh wait, i'll lose by I that i think we so. got a new series for nights of horror where we take up some of the greatest haunt personalities and, and characters and put them up against each other i think that could yeah. be a fun thing honestly Burst. like i really do. And, <laughs> and, and, and 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 obviously lucio is talking in the point of view of hostile and yeah. this is all make believe and this would never happen this is nah. just this is nah. just us this is me taking what i know in the comic book realm and yeah. putting it into the haunt realm yeah you know? yeah i'm just i'm, I'm putting a really iconic. good idea <laughs> these are these are some characters that you would love to see mash up against each other but you know you don't get to see that haunt because we're, we're, we're not going to start <laughs> a full-on brawl at haunt yeah oh God, oh God. i mean i would pay so much money to see that oh but God, that's not so what we're gonna money do money involved with hr i we'll mean it would be fucked. so great to, if you guys just did that one night i i would i would i think i would just be like i uh, would oh, i would man. look directly i would look you directly in the eye like what did we start well we did one thing one night um there was uh have you heard of the monkey brawl um, no. um so the monkey brawl back in 2014, 15, I want to say 15, 15 or 16. Uh, I wasn't the character I was. I wasn't hostile during that time. But uh, Trey was around. Trey was okay. the uh, way to go. And then John Fossmeyer was still the monkey at Carnival. So Trey was a monkey back in carnival back in the day obviously so like so when he transitioned over there i think that was his first that was his first year i think he that was his first year when he got around it might have been 2016 too i'm not sure they probably uh who, if they're watching this they probably know for the fact and they know what i'm talking about too there's plenty of people because um then there was one night where like we they were telling us like oh there's gonna be a monkey brawl or there's gonna be, yeah i was like what they're like, yeah, it's giving a monkey ball right where you know where the train the train track, you know that you know the gate where Oh um, yeah, yeah, where you cross from Squ Ghost Town to towards Boardwalk, towards yes. uh, Johnny Rockets. Yeah, so that's the cutoff if you don't if obviously people that haven't been to not Scary Farm, that is the cutoff to like uh to Ghost Town. Yeah. And the uh, now obviously when you step in it's boardwalk. So um that cross that half that uh borderline point they were like, oh, they're going to go fight right there. I was like, who's fighting? And then they're like, oh, it's, so it's going to be Trey and John Fossmeyer. And I didn't know who Josh, Meyer, Josh Fossmeyer was during the time. Right. I didn't know who John was, and I, I knew Trey. And they're like, yeah, they're going to fight because, you know, like, Trey was, like, the monkey. But, like, he had – so, like, when he got in, when he was in um, – and he had the skull mask, he had, like, the gloves that he used for uh, Car Evil. But he m meshed it up and made it black and put um, a scare cloth around it. But like, and then they're like, "All right, they're gonna meet up at this certain time." And then I think Bags, if I'm correct, was coordinated this whole thing. And of course he, he did. And of course, it's it's fucking Bags. He coordinated. It's a Bags move right there. Yeah, exactly. And then he he there. So all of a sudden, there's monsters around. There's like crowds of monsters. And it's like a chat. There's like, ah, da, 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 da. and then like, and all of a sudden I'm looking, I'm like running towards it. Cause I'm just like, and then there's guests around, they're filming. It's a huge, there's like about 50, 60 crowds of people. Uh -huh. um, it doesn't seem a lot, but there's a lot in that, in that small room, that small area. Yeah. A lot of people. And they're, and then all of a sudden I go in right in the middle and you see Trey and uh, John going like like running up, bouncing up and down like monkeys. Like, <laughs> obviously, John is playing his character, and then you see uh, Trey is doing the same thing and just going back and forth and like screaming at each other. And it's supposed to be like it's a monkey brawl or something. I'm like this. This like it looks fucking crazy and I'm, and where everyone's like and then all of a sudden like you see see people like i got 20 on this dude i got 50 on this guy and you know, like, <laughs> throwing, like shit at each other they're 
are throwing change at each other. Oh and my god, it's so funny. I, I thought mean, it was you know, you, 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 you talk about haunt stories, man. I, I've gotten here so many doing this podcast, yeah. and it's, <laughs> it's it's it's. I think it's the behind the scenes of stuff like that that mm-hmm. really. Uh, it's the reason why I do it. It's I love hearing those stories. I know people love hearing those stories, and it's yeah. one of those things where I'm just I, every time I, I get to interview someone new, I'm like, oh, I wonder what stories they'll have. Like it, it should be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I didn't know where you're trying to get at with this one. <laughs> no, but uh, so uh, so you think the bride would ultimately beat you then? Yeah. I oh, I think she will. I think she would definitely do that. She just she just has that. I uh, I'd like to see that fight, honestly. I would too. I would. I would. I mean, she she probably would 100 percent want to see that. I see that person this coming Not week, too. Universal, can we work together on this, please? Come on, man. Let's do it. We'll, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, go, film, we'll go film at Universal Studios on, on Six Points, Texas. where the I will Westerns. wear a dress that is dr- made like a scare, like some Oh, you're going to be taunting jacket. then, huh? You're going to yeah, be calling I'm, be, the fight. I, I will call the fight, and I'll be like, just taunt, I'll just taunt her. Just, I mean, I can like, already scare. see, like, it, and this is just the cinema geek in me, bro, but like, <laughs> I mean, you look at the old Western sets at Universal Studios, right? Uh, it's all dirt road. All these sets are iconic. You know, so many people have filmed in the past. You know, Quentin Tarantino just shot Once Upon a Time in Hollywood on these same exact sets. Yeah. And uh, I can just see you in the middle of the street. It's nighttime, right? And you got <laughs> you're hostile from the face, from the chin up, but then it pans down and you're wearing the bride's dress. Only hostile <laughs> would probably do something like that. Right, and and can, and then yeah. all of a sudden you're trying to summon the bride, and out of nowhere, just like a, a, a nice pan over, like close up from your face, just pans over to the side, and you see a yeah. figure standing, it's figure in white standing in the back, and it's it, it's the bride, it's her, and just like, right there, it's she has and, that, like and that's that right candle. there. That is that is the trailer right there, right? Yeah, and, there, <laughs> and then you get into the actual fight, and it's just yeah. It's then she she will she will burn she'll burn me with that uh, the candle, candle. My, on on my forehead. And I all right, think all I'll right. Be, uh, Last so the next one, one, the last one I want to see, and this is probably going to be a no-brainer, um, and I, I'm doing this on purpose because uh, it's fun to talk about this person uh, because I'll probably get a text message later when this episode comes out about, you know, why, you know, wh- why, uh, because it was fun, um, and that is Hostile versus Pyro. Uh, should I be safe with this one? <laughs> I don't think there's you. I don't think there's any um, part of this where you come the, out alive. I I don't because but I'm so pleasured by fire though. So I will come out just by walking through the fire, and I'm like, like. Oh, I you're doing. You're going full blown us on this, aren't you? Yeah, I'm just like. You're gonna like be right like, ram through, arms yeah. out wide, arms walking out back wide. into the flame and. And then just walk away and just I have him like, you know what? And I, I'll I'll throw some water at him, you know, whatever. I'll spit at him too. I'll throw some like my drool will like take out his fire. I think ultimately though, he'll just burn he's gonna burn you to a crisp. I think he will too, but I mean, what else does he have too? What else You know the reason why I brought up his name in specific mm-hmm. was because I've never since I've been friends with him, and it's, it's, it's been a short time, but it's felt like a long time. I've yeah. never seen him in person dressed up as Pyro, and I desperately want to see that. And I don't think I'll ever get to see that again. But He, he will. He wouldn't do that one day. He, he, has, he, he always said it that it's always going to be there for him, and he's going to, he, when he comes, when he wants to come back, he'll be ready, and when he, he'll do it, he'll do it. I'm just like, he's, I've seen him before when he did it. I've seen before, and he did it when the time we had that immortal mask, and he wore that huge, huge horns um, one time, and I, I didn't recognize who he was. I didn't know who, who that person was. I was like, oh, is this someone new? And then I, I looked, I'm like, oh, it's, um, someone told me, actually, and I'm like, oh, yeah, it's Scott. And I was like, oh, I just, shit, I've, I, I, so I've seen him slide. I've, I've yeah. talked with him about a lot of things, and, uh-huh. and I've just, I don't think I've ever, I've seen him, I've seen him be a fucking manager. I've seen him do management, management, I, well, but I don't think I've him. ever seen him, yeah. I've never seen him scare. Uh, I would say that he is a great at that work. 
and managing he, he's probably the i i've i've honestly like and i will probably get some throw crap about no probably not actually because everyone will probably agree with me right is that he out of the years i've been there he is probably one of the the most um direct has the best philosophy as far as managing a scare zone he has that way of like telling you approaching you if you were doing something wrong and telling you like hey this is what's going on where can i get you to point a to point b in this amount of like in a week or in a, two weeks and, the, and then and he goes like all right where are you like he will tell you like wait this is what you're doing wrong as your character i think this is what you should be doing to get there to get to point b um he has a very good perspective on that it's very uh it, he i think that was like out of those years i've been there he, i only got to work with him for three years that was probably the best like those those were fun years because like he he not only gave people proper advice but he gave he gave me the ability to like work with something that i am now you know that i've done for the past like five years he left me he gave he gave me that uh you know that advantage to like take control of some character that i thought i didn't know what if it was gonna happen or not mm-hmm. you know like and i didn't know that it was like i i one day that one one day that I did not get approved and i was just like damn like and i went out there i did that character and he if he were he, if he didn't come up to me with that he didn't flash his light at me and tell me like hey what the hell is that like he didn't give me that conversation about how gray it was then it wouldn't never happen i think it honestly wouldn't i think i don't think that character would never been made to this day so it was there was um, like a lot of him was like i i give him a lot of props for that Scott, if you're watching, you can't even get mad at me on this one. I just I brought up your character as a yeah. fictional battle, and that was all Lucille. I didn't tell him <laughs> yeah. to say that. Yeah. Can't even no. get mad at me. Don't get no, mad at me. I, I would. I would. Uh, yeah, I guess he he can win at that. Hey, did you tell him that when you did his show? What? Like the, what you just said? Yeah, I told him. Like I told him that like that this whole character that I did, it would have not happened if it was his help. It was not like it was he 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 was part of he was part of the whole journey why like I I got it I I got this into the zone it's because yeah. of his help I mean it's we got like, we we got to shoot something with him uh, this past Monday uh, that will be coming out uh, I think I believe the first or second week of July um, uh-huh. and it's something that you guys for sure aren't gonna want to miss uh, and we 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 had some guests on that he personally picked out. And I'm excited to, uh, when, when the time comes, release that, that episode of Miles 4 Podcast. But until then, uh, I can promise you it's going to be a, a good time. And it's going to be very educational and very um, very eye-opening for a lot of people who want to come into uh, this world, this business. Um, that's good. So I mean, it's gonna I, be I think that's, um, he, 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 has that, he has that network. He has that, that whole network of like people that he knows and he... he uh, he's been developing he's been there he's been part of the bit like if you if you want to like know a guy that's been part of the bit business for three decades i mean that's the guy that to talk to he's no he knows so much of it and he knows that's my guy lot, right there man that's a lot a lot, lot lot of dude like i i respect the guy i respect him that's like i said like i respect him for what he's gave me he gave me the opportunity to do and i honestly would i don't know where i would be if I, if it, if it wasn't you know if he didn't give me that advantage to take over 100% scott so. see that people love you see <laughs> you won there you go you Dude won fucking who. and that's going <laughs> to that, that will conclude that segment of who would win in a fantasy haunt fight uh, mortal kombat style um, oh i guess i lose like i mean you won two one. out of the three so i mean that's not yeah. It's not good, but it's not bad. You won two yeah. at least. You can walk yeah, out saying you you took two down with you. <laughs> so that's Blue I would Hill for Eagle, sure right? that, that what, I would for sure think I won by Aaron. I would beat the fucking living crap out of that dude. <laughs> I mean, back to Boot Hill they go right. 
The yeah. ones that lost, the <laughs> ones that live, I mean, they're going to be burying you at Boot Hill. I'm sorry to say it, buddy. Right. Yeah, that's true. Oh, man. So, uh, I, you know, I think we, we had a good hour conversation at Haunt. So let's talk a little bit about some, uh, let's switch let's switch gears a little bit. Let's go into the world of, of, of filmmaking overall. Um, Stranger Things Four, man. What'd you uh, What'd you think? Did you finish it? Did you Did you enjoy it? What'd you uh, think? Oh my gosh, Stranger Things. Um, okay, so uh, by the way, I'm not done with it yet. I'm not done. I'm about like um, I have like a few episodes. There's like how many episodes that just released? Uh, like- so far, from my knowledge, I believe seven, seven? Uh, and they got two more on the way, which are gonna be like movie length episodes yeah they are they're gonna be like about there's gonna be like hour and a half two hours two and a half it's gonna be like i think the episode eight is gonna be like hour and a half hour 45 and then episode nine is gonna be like two and a half hours right so it's gonna be a good sum up so i um i just talked about this with uh mike centeno uh we were just talking about like trends, like of like some like tre- trending things, and uh, we were talking about like trending subjects. And then we we're just I brought Stranger Things. I talked about like everyone's watching that show, and um, obviously I am. I got on the bag wagon because I am just the one that just caught up with the show. Like I've already caught up, and I'm the I'm I'm like I'm curious what the show's gonna be like. I, I got good reviews. Uh, so far, it's really good. It, it's very it's different right it's, it's like uh, it's dark it's like um you kind of remind me of like it kind of reminds me of like the the it concept you know how like it well, like kinda, there know, was creepy things involved like it's funny you bring ex- that up because there's specifically one thing i want to talk about involving that um if you're all familiar with it and i was just reading this today uh this is the duffer brothers this is kind of their plans going into season five uh which will be the final season of the series um the Duffer brothers want to do a time jump in from four to five. So you will basically probably be seeing them as adults. Now here is the two uh, things that I'm a little concerned about or one thing I'm concerned about. And one thing that I, that I'm seeing this taking a lot of influence from Uh, first of all, the influence obviously is coming from Stephen King's it, uh, this, the book and the movies that they've done, um, went that way you, you know we started mm. as kids we saw how they were tormented as kids by pennywise and uh-huh. then having them all having to come back to dairy for as adults and having yeah. to deal with pennywise again it's going to uh-huh. be a similar con and i noticed that and it's not even stranger things stealing anything they pay homage to a lot of horror films and, and horror influences they do i think they do that there's there was a uh, i i saw on a on an instagram post they were posting like this um homage of like um homage of of uh what am i forgetting oh nightmare on elm street so you well, know yeah. they were bringing up different concepts they were bringing up like you know like the claw scene where like and they were bringing up that same concept back in the, like the 80s where she had the same like the face too and then they had right. the girl matt it was like her, her her name is max yeah yeah, so she had like that same concept in Stranger Things. Well, and, and, some- and what was cool? Did you get to the episode where, uh, for those who don't know, the news broke like when they were filming this? But uh, did you get to the episode where Robert England has a cameo yet? Yes, okay. I saw that. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, you know, I am a I'm that is a big, interesting. You know, I'm a big Robert England fan. Um, that's Freddy Krueger. Uh, I actually have mm-hmm. a, a glove that my 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 buddy made for me, my coworker. He made it for me, and he scales these things to Robert England's kind of hand. So, like, oh. it, it's going to be, like, an exact, like, on-screen replica of what you, you know, yeah. you see in the movies and shit. So, yeah, um, and then they bring him, they bring him in, and it's, and then they, they have, like, the, they, they have the Vecna as, like, they show the face of Vecna, and they, they compare that to, you know, actually Freddy Cougar, and it's yeah. actually pretty cool. Like, this whole character, this whole Vecna character is very... Well, so getting to that, you know, it's it, it's it's cool when Robert England c- came on the show because, mind you, he he had an amazing scene. That guy is an amazing actor, and and what he did with that scene was, it was amazing. It, it was easily right. one of the, the highlights of, of this season so far for me. Uh, yeah. One of many. I mean, there's a lot of great highlights, but this is easily one of those highlights. But to see him play that role, you know, and, and kind of tell his story and his side of things. 
um, to uh, Robin and Nancy. You know, it was just, it gave me goosebumps. It really did because it was one of those things where I was looking, I'm like, dude, this is fucking Freddy Krueger. And at his age, he still has the fucking acting chops. He may not be doing yeah. Freddy Krueger things anymore, but like I like eights. seeing him do stuff outside of Freddy Krueger because I know the man is so fucking talented. Like, I, I, you know, I, he did wonders with Freddy Krueger and he's iconic for that role. But I know outside of that, that guy can be, you know, I've seen him in only a handful of things. Uh, Stranger Things. He was and, very like in a he he did small roles for the long. Yeah, well, time, and right? I was you know and one of the things that I remember him on. Obviously, Freddy Krueger is the first thing that comes to mind when you think of that name. But mm -hmm. another thing I remember him too is uh, back in the day when the first Black Ops came out, um, Call of Duty Black Ops. They when they had their zombies, one of the zombies uh, maps was called Call of the Dead. And oh. it was supposed to be George Romero, the infamous director who gave oh, us I Night kinda, of the Living Dead. Okay, I remember yeah. this, I think. And yeah, okay. They had, um, you had kind of. Robert England, Michael Rooker, Danny Trejo, and Sarah Michelle Gellar. All famous oh, in, you know, wow. one of them, you know, for, for Danny Trejo fans, you know, he's played it, and a it lot was of, like a, it was like a special, you know, like one of those special bundles and, um, yeah, and Mario so, Mortal Kombat where you so, have to unlock yeah, yeah. a special So character. it was a DLC okay. map, um, yeah, okay. Avenged Seven, that was Avenged Sevenfold's, I think, first time doing music for Call of Duty, but, oh, um, that's badass, oh shit. Yeah, and, yeah. and it was one of those things where, it was uh, Danny Trejo, obviously known for his role. And, I mean, he's done a lot of iconic roles. He's been in a few horror movies. But his most uh, notable role as any horror creature was from Dust Till Dawn uh, when he plays one of the vampires. And oh, then, man. obviously, Robert England, Freddy Krueger, Michael Rooker is known for a lot of, a lot of things, too. Um, but famously, he's known uh, in the horror realm mostly more now than ever is, is the walking dead when he did his time in the walking dead. And of course, Sarah Michelle Geller is Buffy the vampire slayer. So that's, you had all these different, really you know, you had all these different actors who, who played various iconic roles in the horror realm come together, teaming up to kill zombies. And it was such a good map. And Robert England, if you, if you got to, to play as him, the stuff he would say, even in the beginning, uh, intro video, he even says, this is a real nightmare. And that's, you know, referencing Freddy Krueger, and That's and so cool. going back to seeing him in 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 Stranger Things, just just how creepy he was when they visited him, and and just him telling his story and, and how creepy yeah. that sounded, it was just it was wonderful. It's cre It's it's um yeah. It's a, if you if you still have that ability, I mean, that guy can still do it. I mean, he can. He really can. It's like it, it didn't stop at all for him Did so you see that what like somewhere right here there's like see that thing flying around yeah am i going crazy is there a flying here or okay there's a flying here i thought it was like a fucking ghost or something bro We're you know what about... it's vecna dude <laughs> I, you can't i'm sorry audience you couldn't even see my screen right now i had it on lucio's screen but like back here there was a fly running right kind of flying around and it, i thought it was a me knowing, you know, liking paranormal shit, I thought it was a ghost. I was like, shit, oh, my God. thing's haunted, bro. We just got yeah, a camera. It's probably just like, <laughs> hey, we, we fight him too? Uh, yeah, if I, you know, <laughs> I, got the, I, got the, I got the tools. I'll do it. <laughs> um, so I, um, so it's really, it's like that. So like, it's kind of like, like this it concept. It's very creepy. Um, uh, I'm going to go on this little rant here if you don't mind because um, i did on like i said i did this on mike's podcast i mean i'm um when i brought um mike's nintendo on i i brought this up so they brought up these you know the the cast is great 100 percent great 100 percent. there's the, the great casting and they bring up these uh great other cast along with it these new cast and they bring up this guy named Joseph Quinn, which is, uh, he plays Eddie Munson in this character. Eddie. Uh, Eddie Munson. So Eddie Munson is. Is he, the, is he a brand new character for this season or has he been on he a few seasons? A, he is a new character. He's the one that. Was, you know, oh, he's he, the leader of the Hellfire Club. Yes. He yes. Is. I like him. Uh, I, I, okay. Uh, you don't I, like him. Hold on. <laughs> I. So, 
how I'm going to put this. I can't put this in the nicest way possible, but like, you know how like a lot of people were like when it came out, I haven't, I got to only watch it like a few weeks after where people were raving about it and people were raving about it. And then all of a sudden they were like, they brought this guy and then they were like, Oh God, he's so like charming and everything. So well, I wouldn't hot. go as far as yeah, I, liked, try that lot. I more and liked it, his hold, look and his personality. Hold, hold, hold on. Let me, let, let me get there too. Let me get there. I'll, Cause I'll, I'll, I'll go, I'll go. Out. And I'm like, Look, I I like that I agree to some mm-hmm. women that there's some guys that you look and you go like, oh yeah, he's a he's attractive, he's a very handsome man and everything. He's a nice, he's a handsome fictional character or a very fictional actor. Bro, this guy, fucking ugly. Like it's just like he's one of those guys. I'm just like, I I I don't see I don't see that. I don't see that. I, I just, I did the, the, the face texture, like his smile. And it's just like, he's just looks like a fucking stick. Like, I, just, uh, he, like it just looks, I creepy. compared him to me. So you don't like me. I'm not saying cause you're a lot. I, you know, if I, if I was into men, I would rather date you than that guy. I would I, I'm a, pretty flattered by that. Yeah, actually. I would that means a, a lot coming from you. I would date a fucking parrot than just than that guy. And I'm going to get shit for it. Cause I, I, I know I am for the fact. And I, I, and I, and I, um, just was, I, I was not a flatter by, it. by I the think, way, I it, think it, I, the, I named this episode of the podcast. Lucille hates Eddie from stranger things for not clickbait. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I made a whole, like, I just, I made, and I talked about it. I talked about how, like, he just wasn't like, I just didn't find him attractive. Like he, he probably is like a, some women find him attractive in some ways. I, I that's okay. I, I, you can take that. You can. That's fine. I just think. Oh my god, he is fucking ugly. Well, and I just was like, so, and then they're, they're like, "Well, he's charming and everything." I was like, "He's wearing a fucking share wig, god damn it!" Like he's wearing fucking shares wig. That was the hair of the eighties. Bruce Dickinson looked just like that in well, Iron Maiden, and also share. But like you know, like you gotta think like it's. Um, but also, but the full advantage of that though, the the good side of it, he he brought in. A great like entrance towards his character. You know when he re- he describes himself and he was reading that paper or well, like that magazine. Yeah, and, and he and was talking in that demon voice. Like, you, it, what was it, cool it, about it too? What I'm liking about his character too is, um, he is essentially being blamed by the city of Hawkins that. Mm-hmm. You know, because he plays, and and you know, this is an ongoing, and 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 if you notice too, and and I hate to dive into this realm, and I'm not gonna dive into it. I'm just gonna say the what it what I'm seeing in this season, and I'm not gonna go any further about it. But there's a lot of politics to this season, a lot as oh, yeah. far as social issues and things going on in the world. Do you um, know and, that they brought? Uh, I mean, if you read it too, if you read the the beginning of the, if you watch the first episode. They dis- they have a description of what everything is currently going on, and they were just saying like this was shot like years three. It was shot three years. Well, ago. yeah, because you know when this when this came on, um, a fatal mass shooting had happened, um, yeah. and so they they put on a warning label for those who uh, are still affected by it that uh, it might not be. The, the 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 best of heart for you to watch this around that time and that was very very professional and very nice of them to do that to give the audience warnings i, I didn't um, i didn't understand it at first and i was like okay so there's some and then i i, I was like thinking like okay there's something that's going to be happening within this show that's going to be pretty real like seems realistic but it seems very comparable it kind of, it and I, I can see that though I can really do I can really there there is are the the there are those like symptoms of like you know what's going on with the bullying and everything it's like the, it's all much into that but um, yeah I I totally I totally get it. it's very very I I kind of get what you're t- getting uh, saying is like it's very political um, it there there is some deep moments to the to towards the relationship and tell me you you didn't feel sorry for the girl who was fucking with 11 did you get to the roller skate roller skate oh, yeah. episode yet yeah. tell me you didn't feel sorry 
I didn't feel sorry for that girl when she. Oh, got I did hit. not. Feel, I, I, I didn't, did not I, one bit. Uh, I was like, no one's buying your bullshit, I'm, bro. I'm glad that not, bitch. I was got like, hit. I would have. <laughs> if I was in eleven shoes, I would have done the same exact thing. And I would have looked at everyone and I'd be like, what? She fucking deserved it. Did you yeah. not see how she treats me? Fuck oh, all of you guys. Know. Fuck yeah. that. I don't feel the least bit sorry for that. And I would have looked Mike right in the face and been like, I don't I don't apologize for anything that happened tonight. I, I don't. don't care. You don't know how this bitch has been treating me. And I'm fed up. Fuck that. However, I will say this. I don't hate on the actress, though. The actress, actually, in my eyes, and then this is how I base a lot of my performances, uh, you know, when I see performances on movies and stuff. Uh -huh. If the actress or the actor can do their job to make you hate them and to make you feel that way about them, yeah. they are doing a fucking terrific job. And for That's that actress to exactly. do what she did, you know, to, to pick on the hero of the show and, and to really, you know, be that bully character... I mean, not only did it bring, you know, awareness to to what's going on in society as far as, as bullying and whatnot and, and you know, and, and a lot of the school systems and whatnot, but it brought in uh, an awareness that, like, there are, there are fucking cruel people out there. There are. There are and and there this, are, is, it's, this it's, is an it's example on, of it's, it. It's, it's, a, it's very um, – it's unfortunately hard to say that it we do have – those kind of people and you kind of compare it you kind of i would kind of compare it to this is that you know i i watch i'm re-watching game of thrones because house of dragons is coming out soon right. um and then you but you watch that you watch joffrey and joffrey is kind of like the same thing as bullying but back in the day it's like he's king and he can do whatever he wants fuck he commands guy. and then that that guy is the dude that you you can say like fuck that dude man the guy is a piece of shit, but like the guy that played him, if you can play an asshole, you're pretty good at playing an yeah, asshole. And, and, and I think <laughs> that's why a show your job. Like, like this, like Stranger Things, like all these shows, mm -hmm. th they are so good because they get not only do they have amazing writers, but they get talented casts that can put on those shoes. Uh, a good example of this, too, is um, you look at the films of Rob Zombie. And how disturbing and, and weird they are, but that's his style of film, mm. and and you you kind of just you know you, you adapt to it. But you look at an actor like Bill Mos Bill Mosley, who, who who's a, a a common Rob Zombie, um, you know, he comes out in a lot of Rob uh, Zombie films. He's mm. most also most famous for uh, his his role as Chop Top in in Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two. Um, Bill Mosley came out in an interview and and, and expressed. Um, how uncomfortable he was filming some scenes for House of Thousand Corpses, Devil's Rejects, and Three from Hell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you, anyone knows his character, it's a very it, the character makes you feel uncomfortable. But uh, I remember he he his coming out to it and, and he's talking to Rob about it and he tells him he's like I don't really feel comfortable like saying or doing any of these things and he goes Rob like literally pulled him aside he goes that's the point he goes I want the audience to feel uncomfortable around this group because I want the audience to kind of be put in the position that these that the victims are wow. and i want the audience to see who, who these people yeah. are and then that's the point and that's what makes bill mosley a, a fucking underrated and fantastic actor because yeah. you get that out of the you uh, as an actor you get that out of the day you get that at the end of the day yeah, well, you, so you play you know, this evil character well, you know, like watch House of a Thousand Corpses, watch Devil's Rejects, watch Three from Hell, you know, all these movies that he's in. Mm. And you see him and you're like, damn, I don't know if I want to meet this guy in real life. He's, he's pretty scary when you think about it. But then mm. I, I have seen him at so many conventions and, 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 and the way he talks to the fans and interacts with the fans, like he is such a, a, a nice person and, and such just he just loves the fans and he loves that they love his work and he knows that he's not doing it for nothing that the fans yeah. want to see him as these characters over and over again and yeah. and it, you know it, it's, it's it, it kind of warms my heart when you see you know the actors who play these things they'll embrace like yeah we, we you know i was given this role and you know it, it, I, my job was to bring awareness to this especially like you know the example of the stranger things bully i you know i bet she was given the the script and the role and in her head, immediately, she probably did research and, and read articles based around bullying and, and, and how people are affected by it. I mean, it, it, it's a serious topic. And, and for them to touch yeah. on it and, and use their platform for it, 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 it was just yeah. really good. Yeah, the, they probably thought, they, they probably, uh, thought this thoroughly and made sure that, you know, what 
they wanted to make sure like any of this information that they're saying out or any of these scenes, they make sure that it's accurate yeah. towards what's going on in society. Because back yeah. then, I mean, it was still like when they shot that, that was still currently going on. Oh, that yeah. was still like happening. And then, um, and then now it's like it's even gotten worse to see like in the now it, but like that's it, it is a good message though i i'm really glad that they brought something like that and then they brought yeah. that kind of awareness for like anyone so moral of the story don't be a fucking bully no don't be a fucking bully don't be a bully around anywhere don't be a bully no, around don't, aunt. don't be don't a bully do around any conventions don't, do don't be a bully Just anything. don't yeah because don't do i will go 11 on your ass real quick i'll <laughs> Beat the uh, fuck no, I, but no, I, 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 I remember watching that scene, and I was like, I, I, I was straight, I was, I, I was like, I was at a wrestling fucking show. I was losing my shit. I'm like, fuck her <laughs> up, do it. I want to see you fuck her up. God, I was, God damn, I felt just like, kill it. no, I wouldn't. I do felt it like there was a moment. It was, it was felt like the moment when I watched. Uh, I, I'm bringing up <sighs> UFC as a, a, a reference a example. It was this fight when Michael Chandler fought Tony Ferguson, this recent fight. Right. This guy, Michael Chandler, jack, dude. And uh, and a great fighter. Same thing, Tony Ferguson, great fighter. And all of a sudden, Michael Chandler was, was like moving and then all of a sudden does a high kick right in front of his face, kicks him right in the chin. And then knocks out fucking Tony Ferguson. When that happened, everyone was like, yeah! like every, I fucking just screamed. I was like, holy shit, holy shit. Like we were just, it was so crazy. Cause like that was something like Michael Chandler, like that was his, um, his step up. Like he, he is upbringing. Like he brought, he, he's, he fought, he lost like, I think two fights. Yeah. He lost one with Charles Oliveira and he lost one with Justin Gaethje. And, he came back on top and then that that brought him back and now everyone's like holy fucking shit like you fucking front kicked him right in the face because that doesn't happen a lot in in, in ufc fighting but uh, compared to that i think that was the chant like that's how i felt like when i watched um that 11 when beat that when i saw 11 i immediately in my head when she was walking out with the roller skate was thinking you know a little ding 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 action <laughs> but uh um apparently the crowd thought otherwise and and they were giving us a lot of that so you know it's i should start messing with sound effects i can't hear them but i know the audience and you can hear them so you know that's, oh, that's good i can i can hear it too a little bit and then you know it it, it was one of those things where i yelled out oh, son of a bitch <laughs> <laughs> right, oh, that's for sound effects. I'm, having, I'm having too much fun with those things um but no it, it, it's been a good season and, over general uh, general yeah over it's, this, so far this it's it's been a good season and to see uh uh you know what's going on with the season leading up and, you know they're they're marketing this season heavily is this is the end of the beginning because um or no the beginning of the end i'm sorry um because the next season is is the last season they only ever intended for it to be a five season story and uh they they've really they really up every season and i love it but do you I'm have glad- like just a quick like uh, quick review like quick answer like do you think something's gonna happen like pretty like i have a feeling you got a two and a half hour season finale right mm-hmm you don't do a whole season finale like that, and I think someone's not going to make it out, no. honestly. I really I do. I don't think so. I, I think someone's going to get killed off, and it's going to be a fan-favorite character, especially going from the farewell. You know, this might be the last time we might see the kids, you know, unless they're going to do a, an it kind of thing where they, when they do turn into adults, they do flashbacks of them as kids, but this might be the last time we see the kids if they go through with the the time jump they want to do because mm-hmm. they know the kids are getting older uh you know and and it's it's going to be a little harder to to kind of sell them in high school after a certain long you know amount of time but true it, it's going to be an interesting and so i i have a feeling by the end of the season someone's not going to make it out and i think it's going to be a very it's going to be it's going to be a very big talk in the in the in the community of of this world oh yeah because that's, that's I mean, look be. at look at what Endgame did when Avengers uh-huh. came out. That was a fucking tw- that was a ten year journey, and look how that ended. 
Yeah. You know, people still talk about it to this day. So I, I, you, you don't mark, you know, this, this season as it is took a while to come out and that's strictly due to the pandemic, but you know, the way they're doing this season and then kind of leaving us in the air for two more episodes. And then, you know, our villain who is hell bent on just killing people and the way yeah. he kills them and stuff. So if someone is not coming out alive and I hate to say that, and it's going to, it's probably going to be someone that's a fan favorite. Um, and there will three, be, there will be memes. There will be like a lot of like reactions. Like there will be a highlight. I think there's going to be a highlight moment that, everyone's going to be plain and that will be like a meme in some sort you know you know yeah. what i'm talking about yeah, yeah there'll be there's some there's gonna be something that's gonna happen like you know when like endgame happened you know the i love you 3000 right. came out like that was something that was like, the biggest every, thing yeah and that kind thing. of that goes like a, that goes a couple different ways as far as what how mm -hmm. you look at it now compared to right. when you first watched it you know so yeah of course yeah no I, I i personally think someone someone's not gonna make it out this season I maybe a few so. people i don't know i mean there's a lot of characters that are really loved and i feel like a lot of this community would be very heartbroken if we lost one of those cast members sure and um they do a good job of of really keeping things secretive and and that's a lot of things in the movie industry now because um, mm -hmm. you know you don't want to give out spoilers you want you want the the audience to be surprised and and that's a hard thing to keep nowadays with technology you know you can take pictures on your phone now and shit and leak shit mm -hmm. and you know i see a lot of set videos and shit during when they film marvel films of people like filming yeah. from their balconies and shit like if they're filming on location at different places so yeah it's going to be cool to see what they do next, yeah. and I'm excited to see what the new season is, but I'm glad you're enjoying it so far. Um, I, yeah, I am. Sorry. So the, there's a lot. To, I mean, there's a lot to, of things uh, out. Turn I mean, off, uh, we'll get you on another episode. I mean, we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're on an hour and a half already, so it's it's one of those. But, uh, we, I mean, there's still a lot i got to talk to you. Maybe we'll save it when we do Cinema Dudes when we return yeah, to that. But, of course. I mean, Obi-Wan's yeah. out right now. Ms. Marvel oh. just dropped today. That was surprisingly, I it's, was very impressed with that. The Miss Marvel, you think? Yeah. Well, I haven't got to see it yet, but I know Obi Wan. It's been oh. really good. We won't get into it too much, but too much. It's if uh, you it's, have if you have to summarize it in one word right now, what what would that word be? I I think it's been it. If I gotta compare like the the shows, Mandalorian obviously it's like it can't it can't be, but. That will be like the top it's set. I think. I think that. I think, as it's going where it's going, I think by the end of the first, that end of that season, I think it will top off Mandalorian. Well, I, I mean, think we'll it will. See. I mean, this I last think episode it will. was really. I. You know what? It, it's just me, and I. And I think he's one of the greatest movie villains of all time. Oh yeah. Um. But just seeing Darth Vader again. You know, the last oh, time we saw him God. was in Rogue One. Yeah. And to see him back, Hayden Christensen is in the suit. Yes. If uh, I'm going to shoot a spoiler here real quick, but James Earl Jones has returned to do the voice. So and cool. when you when you have those two legends, that you know, the one that we we saw the that one quick fight. Yeah, you know, we scene. saw we saw the, the the one that played the face of Anakin Skywalker in the prequels and then the one that voiced Anakin Skywalker in the original trilogy to have them finally, you know, come together reunited again since episode 3. And I don't yes. even know if it was Hayden Christian in the episode three. It might have been a stunt double or something. But to have them reunited and have that duo again is well, did so you see amazing. Him with the, with the with the cloth, like the cloak, like yeah, the, the, yeah. He was he was wearing that. Well, I mean, he had the pale face and everything. And then that was him. I knew that was him because you can see with the eyes because he had the same. Yeah, no, eye he's, he's, from some. It, it's from Vader. A, it's almost like Vader playing mind games with Obi Wan. He wants to see oh, a yeah. version of him, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's what I like about this. And then I love it too. I th I just think it's so. I think it's so interesting because like, it, I love these kind of stories from Star Wars. Is that they bring a different story concept from the other side of the world. It's not just the mainstream of like Star Wars. Yeah, it's just these different journeys, and they they. You know, you see the Mandalorians, you see the Obi Wan's, and like they they have they go these different journeys, and they meet these different people, these different characters that, and then these different characters become more um, into the story and more into the world of Star Wars, and it's it's very cool. I like it. I love 100%, it. Hundred percent, man. 100%. I, I'm I'm really I'm saying, dude. I think when it that by the end of that season. I think that's gonna top off the the uh, top of Mandalorian. We'll see. And then obviously when top when Mandalorian comes back, I think Mandalorian will probably will top. I'm gonna give that you a spoiler too. right now for Obi Wan. Um, 
Obi Wan lives, ends up becoming <laughs> old, finding Luke, and they end up destroying the Death Star. There's uh, a spoiler. Qui Gon comes back in some ways. <laughs> I wish, man. I want. I hope so. I really do. But it's not. It's not Qui Gon. It's <laughs> the guy from Taken. <laughs> oh, it's Liam Neeson's character from Taken. Yeah, I don't know yeah. who you are. Yeah. <laughs> the multiverse is real, bro. Real. <laughs> He's fucking Doctor Strange just tapped into the wrong multiverse. That's another one. Him. That's another one. Qui Gon versus the guy from Taken. I uh, wonder who. Qui Gon's gonna win, bro. He's a fucking Jedi master. Yeah, that's true. He's got the like, force. He's got a lightsaber. I, I mean, but like what? But I mean, I mean, like, I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't rule out though that taking Liam Neeson would not put up a fight because he would. And he would try yeah. strategically to do everything he can to try to take down Qui Gon, but ultimately it's going to come down to Qui Gon overpowering him with the Force and yeah. a lightsaber. <laughs> okay, but that's true. But I, I mean, will he, say this. But he has the abilities. He has the ability because he did I, say I, he I, has I, the skills. I will say this. Yeah, he skills does have that apply set of skills. his skills, um, and he has the skills to. I, I will say this people. though. It, it's it, it doesn't. You know, I I don't know how real bullets are uh, an effect with lightsabers. I, I, I want to assume that they melt, but everything we've seen with lightsabers that people shoot at them has all been laser weapons. So, mm. I mean, I, he, I mean, well, say if he were to get like a lightsaber, is he I mean, do like, I, is he, I, will I, he do like a laser, a a laser gun? Yeah, he will. He probably do. Oh, yeah, like a neo it's, thing from Matrix where he just stops yeah, the bullets just, and yeah, he probably. Oh yeah. Probably so do that's, something that's, like that. That's Matrix stealing from Star Wars. Or from they, he's Matrix. like, oh my god, it's like titanium. It's like metal. Like I can't freaking mess with that. Or that no, would be can. Uh, yeah, yeah, he can actually he can <laughs> actually he can. He has that ability. Sorry, that's the Matrix stealing from Star Wars, stealing from the Matrix. <laughs> It's a it's, like a, it's a still section. It's a mess of different variants. He had, like Qui Gon had to go visit like the world of like Matrix, and uh, then he goes like, I think when he went to go visit like the current one, he was like, "Oh shit, I'll be back." <laughs> he goes, "I can't visit this one because how shitty it was from that recent movie." <laughs> God. Oh man, Real ladies world. and gentlemen. Oh man, ladies and gentlemen, LS3 podcast out right now. Uh, check it out. New episodes every single week. Uh, where you can Every ever Wednesday. whatever you can stream them uh, audio right now. Um, uh, Spotify, Apple, uh, Google Podcasts. Um, I do TikToks. Uh, so if anyone's a TikTok fan, um, I do highlights of like clips from the show that I think are memorable or funny, and I will grab that and I'll post it on TikTok. And I also will post it on my Instagram too, um, which that one is R U F F U four, and. Um, also, I will be on YouTube soon, but everything will be on audio, though. Audio, Expanding though. Expanding the uh, platforms, huh? I, I am. I'm trying to get every platform I can just to just to bring it out there. I, I want to bring. I want to try to do it. Um, audio will be if I if I do bring uh, YouTube on there, it will be only on audio, though. But I know people are like huge, like they they love listening to YouTube, so like. I I'm just saying right now, I'll sign you to a deal right now where we post LS3 exclusively on Nights of War YouTube. I will do that. Well, we, we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll my talk. people I'll will fire. contact your people. Yeah, and my people will contact your people. Which yeah, is the only and thing. then those, those people's <laughs> peoples will talk to their peoples, and they'll contact me, and we'll yeah, get a someone, someone It's, it's a by. chain. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a, it's yeah. a ladder of, you know. Aaron will come involved in management. the middle, too. Yeah. It's a management ladder. <laughs> that is what it is. Um, well, Lucio, thank you so much for being on Shoot the Shit today. Appreciate it. It's of good course. to finally shoot the shit uh, with you. Yeah, of course, man. Um, I feel like we covered a lot of interesting things today. Yeah, we um, did. We did. I, I keep that versus like that versus fight, that hunt versus. Pe- oh, that's uh, staying in. I'm not changing. I'm not taking it out. Yeah, the concept a, is in my head too. So it's really interesting. I, I want to see everyone's perspective on that. I want to see everyone's opinion. What they what they think. Hot they mashup fight. coming soon on the Knights of Four. You know what would be fun, too, is actually if we bring the people that play the people and oh. have them give me a little debate. That could Maybe. be, ooh, I'm on to something. Yeah, I am on to something. something 100%. You may be. That but, could be fun. But if, it, I mean, that, that, that's, they, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Then, then they give their own opinion about it. They'd be like, well. I have this power. They're like, well, I have this power too. And then like, well, that sucks because I have this. Like, well, that sucks because I have this. And then it goes off in a debate. And then um, two hours later, just, we have a full podcast. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, so I, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking about also bringing back another series I did last year that was a lot of fun, which was uh, um, Haunters React, where we, we, we talk with a lot of uh, characters. We find out what their favorite mazes were. And uh, we react to the the maze walkthrough oh, together. Oh, that. That's something. Yes, fun to I do. will be hitting yeah. you up for that. We'll we'll yeah. probably be doing that biweekly. That way, it's not overplayed. But it's yeah, you do that. You do like a thirty minute concept of that, right? You just do like a short like. Oh, that's video. a short one. Yeah, that's that's I we we talk about why you like the maze and uh -huh. then we react to it together and and then we talk about what you're looking forward to this this coming oh, season. So okay, yeah, I look forward to that. I like it. I like that. I like, I like that concept. Mm-hmm. Of course, <laughs> awesome. I like what you do, dude. It's very awesome what you do. I'm very proud of what you do. So, hey man, I'm just trying to change the game. That's all. I'm yeah, trying to do. you I'm are. Trying to build you, my, I'm trying I'm, to build my kingdom. I'm telling you, there's no one else that can bring people like me or any other haunt actor. And I um, want everyone to come to my kingdom and and feel equal and feel the same. And yes, you know, I'm just a guy. I'm just an idiot kid who one day decided to pick up a camera and talk about Halloween Horror Nights. Exactly. Five years yeah. later, that has expanded so much more than just Halloween Horror Nights. Here we are. Here we are now. Exactly. Five years later. Exactly. Exactly, man. Awesome. awesome. But Lucio, it was great talking to you. We're gonna do this again Thank soon. Thank you. But of course, man. Thank you so much. Go check out LS3 Podcast, part of the Madhouse Podcasting Network. Out uh, now, new episodes every single week on Spotify. Anything, anywhere you can stream podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Coming soon, maybe to Nights of Horror. Who knows? We're going to be in talks really soon. But with all that being said, uh, if you guys are new to the channel, uh, consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification be where every time you put up a new video, we have a lot of great haunt horror content coming your way all summer long um, with announcements, with uh, conventions, with podcasts, podcasts. Uh, original videos you name it we're going to be doing it we're going to be covering it it's going to be a busy summer but it's going to be a lot of fun and we get to bring you guys along for the journey um make sure to hit that like button and leave some comments down for lucio uh and yeah follow us on instagram at the nights of horror twitter at nights of horror i'm your host anthony zaragoza this is the shoot the ship podcast now ladies and gentlemen it is my pleasure to introduce our musical act for this episode from La Puente, California, my good friends, the almighty Mortalis. Enjoy. <laughs>